keyboard. Right. Yeah. Good afternoon. Um, I hope I can entertain you all this afternoon. I'm going to talk about the sheet serial numbers of the King George VI period of the Falkland Island issues of stamps. Yep, there we are. I'm going to attempt to explain a number of things today, particularly we're talking about sheet numbers, why it's there, how did it get there, when, where they introduced, who wanted it, and all the questions you can see on the screen. And a sheet number, if you are not familiar, is shown at the upper part of the image in the orange oval, yellow oval. That is a sheet number. And very convincingly, it's sheet 0001, the first numbered sheet of that value of that printing. Why is it there? It's there because the Falkland Island government, uh, through the uh, postal office, through the post office, decided they wanted to have uh, a numbering system to ease the management of stock, and that was um, typical of a number of colonial administrations at that time. As far as I know. This requirement is no longer um, placed in the contracts placed with the printers by the Falkland Island government. The very first to be issued were on the coronation of King George VI issue in 1937. There were three values, as you know, and this table shows you the different numbers that applied to the different various requisitions or printings of the different values. You can see clearly showing, um, let me get, for the halfpenny, and you can see that um, the numbers applies to sheets of 60, as well as to half sheets of 30. Um, and that's an overall statement extracted from the, um, dispatch sheets prepared by the inspectors of the printings uh, of the printer and shipped out to the colony, in this case, the Falkland Islands. So here we are, the very first issue of sheet numbers was, was the coronation issue, as, as I said, and this is the lowest value, the halfpenny, and by good fortune, we have the first of sheet number 001, of that series. Uh, and they go up to a roughly five and a half thousand, as you see from the left half sheet on the right of the screen. Penny value, again, we've got three and four digit sheet numbers. Um, part of the requirement was to have each individual sheet or part sheet numbered by the printers uh, and uh, stock shipped to Crown agents were not stamped. But in the case, as does happen, the Crown agent stock has sufficient to meet Stanley's requirements when Stanley's requirements have run low. Some sheets from the Crown agent stocks were returned to the printers to be numbered before shipment out to the islands. And last value of this issue, the Tupney Hapney. Um, again, three and four uh, sheet numbers. A good example of a half sheet on the right of the screen. Uh, and this um, numbering led to uh, better management of the stock uh, held by the Falkland Island Treasury prior to issue to the postmaster for dissemination through the post offices. There were two policies that could be adopted by the Treasury. First in, first out, FIFO. Last in, last out, LILO. In the case of the Falklands, the policy was always first in, first out. So this tended to mean that all the low numbers were issued, but not necessarily all the highest numbers because if the stock 
If the stamp issue was withdrawn before the stocks were fully run down, then the higher numbers were never issued and were subsequently destroyed. This is significant in particular as far as the victory issue and other um, uh, um, uh, um, issues later uh, during the Queen Elizabeth era. We move on to the famous um, 1938 pictorials in issue throughout the reign of King George VI. Um, a set of some 12 values was issued on the, early in January 1938. The design had originally been prepared when King Edward VII was on the throne for that short period of time before he, he uh, abdicated. There were four other values issued later in the life of the issue, taking the total number of values up to 16. There were also 16 printings, but some of these printings, as is significant, were produced under serious um, difficult circumstances caused by damage to the printing uh, premises by German bombing in London. The reprint of 1938 has the iconic five shilling indigo, and we'll see that that has some uh, slightly different uh, sheet numbering uh, characteristics as we go through this presentation. The top four values were each printed four times. The issue has been subject to serious research, so it's one of the better understood issues of stamps from the Falkland Islands, but there are areas we have not been able to investigate due to loss of um, records by fire when the post office in 1944 was burnt down. The, the, the records generated by the treasury of issue of stamps to the, print, to the post office has survived. And Stefan found these during one of his visits to the islands and published all the data in the Upland Goose. It's a very popular issue, especially for specialists, but some consider it to be rather complex. If, if you wish to ask a question about what I'm talking about, I would prefer you hold back and ask at the end or send a note to Kim, who will keep the notes together and ask questions on your behalf later, if that's okay with you. I briefly run through before we go through some of the more interesting detail and analysis of the printings. There were 16 in all, but six of them don't really account as far as we're concerned in this discussion of Falkland Island stamps because they were overprinted over -printed for sale uh, as the dependency issues associated with Operation Tabarin and the like. So that should leave 10 issues or 10 printings for the Falkland Islands, but that's not strictly true because the first one for the depend second one for the dependencies um, exceeded the dependencies demands and so were supplied to Stanley unnumbered. And that is the reason why there is a fourth Fortney printing SH84D, as is noted here um, on my comments on the printing six. I'm sure you've, you've probably read that as I speak, so I won't spend any more time on that particular issue, but it is material to the rest of the presentation. Come on. So here we are, this, um, this cover, which um, had been known for some time, but had not been widely seen. Uh, it was offered uh, for sale earlier this week at Grosvenor, 
and I think it was sold for something like 2,700, 2,800 pounds. So quite a lot of money, really. Um, my bid did not survive the competition to the end, um, but I did bid. So here they all are, all values, all mint. The previous lot were, of course, all used. Um, you can see they've all fairly wide margins to the right, but there was some problems with the guillotining or the size of the paper. Uh, and in particular, the Tupney Hapney, as you can see, has a very shallow top margin. And for that reason, uh, the printer has put the sheet number here on the right selvage because there wasn't room on the top narrow selvage. The same also applies in the case of the half crown. Um, and we can see that there were four, three, and my idea it's jumped, I don't know why. And two digit numbers used by the various values according to the size of the print order. As far as the pound was concerned, only 37 sheets were sent to the islands. So there are only potentially 37 sheet numbered pound stamps in existence or were in existence. A very scarce item to find now for obvious reasons. There are some unusual items, untypical items, and they are some of them. The few that are known are shown on this screen. We've got further um, paper size issues moving the halfpenny sheet number round uh, here, as you can see, and here, as you can see on the Faulkney value. These are not so difficult to find. I believe this to be the only one. And unusually, we've got here on the Tupney Hapney on the left margin. I suggest that was probably a half sheet of 30. It's the only one I've ever seen. Um, in theory, there should be the possibility of finding a mint half sheet of 30, but I've never seen it. I don't know um, if any survive. It's unknown. And lastly here, this large block, a rather nice block of Fortney. You can see that the number is roughly halfway down the right hand side. So this is either a bottom half sheet of 30 or a bottom uh, corner sheet of um, only 15 examples from the south east corner. Again, it's the only one I've ever seen. I think I bought it from a, a Greek um, auction. I think that's where that came from. Second printing. Um, here, uh, the numbers produced were bigger. So they're all a minimum of three numbers, even the pound has three digits. Um, interesting to see that uh, the six is deemed in most catalogues to be one of two shades. And as you can see here, even on this um, display, there is a difference of shading between the browns. We've got the iconic five shilling indigo, narrow top margin. So not surprising the numbers in a side margin, but only in a left, in this case, margin. I, I suggest that may be um, because if you turn the sheet through 90 degrees, it would appear in the same orientation in the top right hand corner in the top margin. This is often called the colonial printing of this issue because none were kept in London. They were all shipped out to the colony just before um, the start of World War II.
move um, to the second um, variance of the unusual. We've got half sheets, the Tupney value, the Sixmley value. Um, Sixmley value, as far as I know, is the only example uh, Tony Belfi had ever seen, and I bought it from him, and none has turned up since. Also, at one time in Tony's collection was this extraordinary strip of Tupney stamps um, of, from the full height of the sheet from top to the bottom, but it's um, only photographed the top end because where the, the blue arrow is drawing your attention, there is no perforation uh, at the top of the stamp here. So this is a unique piece, rather lovely to have a sheet number on it, um, one of the more expensive items of this issue. This issue too um, has all the uh, um, examples on this um, one cover with sheet numbers. Um, and includes examples from the 1938 and 1941 printings, 1941 printings being from the lower values, these three here. Um, addressed to H.L. Bound, Nat Bound, who was a postmaster in the 60s of um, Stanley Post Office, the colonial postmaster. I've attempt, attempted to um, summarize how to tell the differences between the two printings, the 1937 and the 1938 41 printings, in terms of sheet numbers. Um, and I'm trying to suggest that if, the sheet, if there are three sheet numbers on the pound, it must be this printing. But if there were two, it must be the first printing, etc., all the way down that page. Um, the asterisk. Uh, is an attempt to say that you can find um, the sheet numbers in two places, as exampled here on this halfpenny. It's known here and here, all dependent on how deep the top margin was. The indigo is always found in this position, whereas on the first printing, it would be like this one. So, Sheet numbers can help the specialist in determining which printing the uh, sh stamping question comes from. Some more fun with uh, the 1941 printing. It was produced in new colors with a new value of thrupens. The shrimps was necessary due to the increase in 1940 of the um, foreign or UPU letter rate from Tuppence Hapney to Thruppence. But again, we can find sheet numbers in places other than the traditional northeast corner. Um, here, there's a obviously from a half sheet of um, 30 or a corner sheet of 15, and likewise here on the thruppence. Um, and uh, here we've got uh, apparently a narrow margin. I'm going to go back. I don't know why it jumps. We, we seem to have plenty of space on the top for the number, but unusually it's on the right-hand side. I cannot explain why. What is interesting about this um, printing is that this was the pr first printing to be regularly available from London, from stocks held by Crown agents in London. The prior printings, that service was not available. Prior to the um, introduction of this London-based service for the philatelic trade, the trade could only have um, preferential purchasing options on the first printing when um, they had to submit uh, orders to Crown agents to buy the sheets they wanted. Um, and uh, once um, the stock available 
before the trade had been exhausted, that was it. It was only later in, in during World War II that the well-established Crown Agents trade relationships were set up. Um, again, um, believed to be from a southwest corner sheet of 15, left margin number. Um, not, uh, not many of these are known. This is a slightly unusual situation that there were three different first day issue date options because due to wartime conditions, the um, first lot of first day issues were based from Stanley on the 14th of July. It wasn't until the 2nd of September that Fox Bay was equipped and offered the same opportunity. And it was even later before Gritvick and had the stamps on the 30th, 30th of September, 1941. Printing four, which is the same as printing three plus the halfpenny value. By then, that was a restocking of the uh, um, post office to meet post office requirements. So all four values, nice examples across the top of the screen in the usual place, and at the bottom two in the right hand margin. Um, the halfpenny looks a little narrow, but the penny looks wide enough to have taken the number, but I cannot explain why that margin in that case was used. There are a number of positions of number of uh, sheet numbers on these uh, on this printing, and I think the next slide shows you quite a variation in where you can put no, so it's the next slide after this. This is um, from the fourth printing, but the sheet number's in the right margin for a bottom, bottom corner, um, southeast sheet of 15. I've never seen another like it. I believe it's unique. In the case of the Tupney from this printing, you can find sheet numbers in four different places, as is shown. The two are bottom quarter sheets suspect the 4301 is a left half sheet, but it could equally be a top quarter sheet, can't say. I think this is the value that has more different places to find a sheet number than any other value uh, of any of the Falkland Island stamps that were sheet numbered. Um, I don't know the story about these. Um, one suspects that the wrong number was here and so removed and renumbered further down, but that's speculation. Again, I've never seen another example. On this wartime printing of 1942, um, the albino sheet numbers can be found. What do we mean by albino sheet numbers? They are more readily seen if you turn the block over and look at the back. Um, and you can see, let me go here, this is the back of this block. And you can see we've got number 1602, and there are other numbers that you can just see if you get the block in question with the light bouncing off the back. But what appears to have happened is that there was a pile of stamps which were numbered, and the numbering impression impressed itself not only on the top, but the lower uh, sheets behind, uh, and you can see in some cases quite a long stream of numbers, as is here. These blocks, excuse me, I do not understand why it keeps jumping. Here. 
you can see quite a long stream of numbers going down here. And these three images have been um, computer generated to, to make them look uh, easy to read, unlike a true to life one here. So this has all been reversed. So the numbers begin to stand out on 602, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. As far as I know, it's only on um, this particular printing and this particular value that you can find uh, albino numbers to any great extent. They may exist on other wartime printings, but I haven't seen them. Printing six is the printing that was produced for overprinting with the dependencies for the various um, four dependencies, with excess stocks unoverprinted being added to the Stanley stock. Um, the only value of, of any great significance is the fourpence that we've talked about. And the other way that you can be sure that you're looking at uh, printing six is that with a good magnifying glass, you can see the evidence of fibers in the paper, colored fibers. Um, and this is what I'm talking about here and is the, the easiest way of being, uh, being sure you're looking at a wartime printing six. Um, it is also um, a slightly gray colored paper because they could not use sufficient bleach in the manufacture of the paper due to wartime restrictions to make sure the paper or the pulp was a good white color. Printing 12, so we've lost a few printings because they were, as I say, um, all allocated for producing dependency overprints. But printing 12 was the first new value to be added just after the war for the so-called airmail rate. Um, our friend Carl Lellman was instrumental in its design, but it was a while before the one and threepenny rate in, uh, uh, was made available from the post office for airmail um, in May 48. I explained earlier that we had lost a lot of post office records during the fire in 1944. And this, as it so happens, is the only printing that the, the printer's dispatch records, which gave us the history and detail of the sheet number allocations, that has survived. We also know that half sheets uh, of 30 from that record were produced. And we have a nice example here, sheet 2255 being a half sheet of 30. Thirteen Print 13, we're now after the war. Um, three values produced. The penny has its sheet number classically over Position one, only one of the nine penny sheets, uh, sheet numbered is known. And the shilling, which is of the sort of very black blue color, no sheet numbers have ever been found. In fact, we think that, they, that, that printing was not sheet numbered. Unusual, but we have no uh, other, um, we have no reason of knowing why uh, that printing was not numbered. Fourteen, a small printing, the fourth printing of the Hapney value. These are the only two sheet numbers examples I've ever seen. The one on the right is unmounted and the one on the left is used. Stock was quite small and I don't think um, that uh, well, I think most of the stock was subsequently just destroyed uh, early in uh, uh, um, Queen Elizabeth's reign. Getting towards the end, 
happened to 15, um, three values, as you can see. I've never seen, perhaps it exists, the one that isn't here with the, the topmost value with a top margin sheet number. Uh, it may exist, but I've not seen it. And so we move on. We finished talking about the 1938-50 um, set. We move on to the first of the commemoratives after the war, the peace or the victory issue, according to what you prefer. Um, quite uh, easy to find sheet numbers, incredible quantities printed. Um, and this printing uh, the halfpenny with a um, different position number to indicate a half sheet are known, but the threatenings have not ever been seen. Perhaps all the half sheets were in the the highest numbers, uh, never sewn and um, subsequently destroyed. Speculation, but I suspect that's um, quite a reasonable prediction. Half sheet of a penny. We know it's a half sheet because we've got this um, top margins, sheet middle marking highlighted in the blue oval at the extreme right of the screen. Here are the records that tell us about um, the sheet numbers for the Silver Wedding the issue of 1948. These are copies of the dispatch sheets about which I have spoken, but here it's clearly telling you what the sheet numbers were three figures, four figures, um, only necessary three figures because they only did 167 sheets and all the rest of it. These are the, um, the essential information that we would love to find for the 1938-50 issue, but sadly, only one value, the one on have survived. Here we are. The pound is quite scarce, quite difficult to find. Um, but that shows you the three digits on the pound, four on the lower value. Um, as I say there, philatelically, not much interest in this issue. Um, nice to see yet another uh, sheet number one cover exists for this value, but um, that's it really. Not a very popular issue for the philatelist. And this is another not very popular, rather boring issue. Very heavily overproduced, um, thousands of sheets printed, only 500 of all four values was ever uh, in a single batch issued from the treasury to meet local post office needs. The rules of first in, first out were clearly, clearly not maintained. They seem to have been drawn from roughly the middle of the pile. Why? I do not know. As I said, large quantities produced, 500 of each issued, heavy destruction of the balance. We move on to the 52 issue. Um, another nice example of all the 001s um, addressed to the governor. Um, obviously, uh, a little while after they were first issued, but nevertheless, a nice example. There is a little bit of interest in sheet numbers of this issue, I have to admit, um, but not to the same extent of the 3850. So just um, to talk a little bit about the standard sheet format of this issue, we have um, these sheets produced uh, on a single large printing of two panes, one on the left A and on the right B. And this sheet is from the B, which we see here. We see this as a key 
marking here to help to identify a left half sheet and here this sheet 2496 where we expect to see it. Going through the various values, all quite straightforward. Up in the northeast top right corner, we've got three and four digit numbers, quite typical really. Not a lot to say about that. And the rest of the values, um, I found some of these quite difficult to find. Um, but there we are, that's um, the fun of philately, I guess. There are some unusual items to look forward to in terms of the first two low values, halfpenny and penny. There was a second printing and less than a thousand sheets supplied to the islands. So we've got three digit numbers and clearly um, an unusual situation here. I, I suspect this was a um, bottom southeast sheet of 15 but the number here is here, upside down, which would be um, suggesting that the sheets were turned through 180 degrees to be sheet numbered. In that way, we will get the number right way up in the expected position. I am, there we are. So further examples, of unusual numbers positions on this value. The Tapi Hapni with the Fortney block beneath are both from top up um, supplies from Crown Agent stock held in London to um, improve the quantity held on the islands um, at the expense of the stock Crown Agents was holding, which they deemed to be sufficient. The um, Numbers were typically in up to hundreds of sheets, so we've got fairly low numbers here. This we know is from a left half sheet because we can see the center marking that I drew your attention to earlier, as is this, but it's um, probably a Northeast 15. Again, we've got this central marking um, that I drew your attention to. So that covers most of what I want to say. A little bit of um, self-promotion here. If you want to read more and you find it fascinating, as I do, there's the monograph you need to get hold of. Um, and uh, that brings my um, presentation to, uh, to an end. Um, Stefan and I were one day um, looking out of our sunset window, as we call it, and this was the scene the setting sun um, gave us, courtesy of Stefan's catalogue. I had a copy of this wonderful picture. And there you are, just to tell you all, was the house from which it was taken. That completes my presentation. I hope I've entertained you. Happy to take any questions that um, Kim may ask on your behalf 